All right, my friends, so far, we have completed the four basic CRUD operations in Mongo. Congratulations. We have learned how to create, read, update, and delete records. Now, the things we've learned so far, yeah, kind of basic. So now it's time to continue with uh, some more complex usage of these class-based update operations. So we've only had two properties, and that is name, student number. So now we're going to add a few more. We're going to add article count as a new property, and this will refer to making a kind of article which a student will upload to the site. All right, so imagine that we have several students. Each student has a different number of articles. So we'll express them as an integer. Now, in order to do this, we will add this property into our schema. In other words, we will update our model this way. Inside the source folder, we are going to open the student.js file. And in here, in the new schema, pass in the new property article count, number and grade, number, and save it. Now let's move on back to the update test file. Now I'm going to give all of my students 10 as the beginning grade. However, I also want to increase this grade according to the number of articles that the students have. Now, we cannot do this just to update operators. Instead, there are Mongo operators to do this, and that's what we're here to show you. So first off, let me just explain a little bit of the logic of these operators. So what about finding different students with the same criteria that we are looking for? Uh, we fetch them and we iterate through all of them, change the grades of all of them and save them. Well, let's look at the diagram here. So first, you fetch every student, load them into the server, update the grades through multiply with the article numbers, and finally save the records to the database again. Well, of course it will work. What's the problem here, though? Well, the server is going to take a huge performance hit, you know, once you get into the more complex databases. We're just working with a couple of records. So, of course, it would work, but we don't want to load that much data into the server. So, instead, we're going to use our test suite to send a message or instruction to our database to find the students that we're looking for. Make sense? So, in our example, Find the student with the name of Jason, update the grade by multiply with the article number. Now let's be careful here. We're not setting their grade value to be what we want. Doing it this way, instead of expecting our server to do all of the stuff, now we want Mongo to do the heavy lifting, right? To do those changes. Yes, indeed. Now's when we call up Mongo update modifiers, which can be one of the more complicated or challenging parts of Mongo, but that's why you're here and that's why I'm here. So let me just show you by searching in Google, MongoDB update operators. Click on the first site. And yeah, as you can see here, collection of Mongo update modifiers, like I already mentioned, but these are used with the update function inside our different methods of updating. So when you're using these modifiers, you can actually send instructions to Mongo to do whatever you want. Now, it's obviously a whole lot more preferable to use these modifiers rather than taking a whole record into our server, update it, and then send it back, don't you think? So in other words, they are so efficient, it just makes sense to use these while you're updating the records. So these are all the operators and the explanations for them. In our example, I'm just going to use the multiply operator, but you can go ahead and 
read as much as you want and work with any of the others that you want. So next time, we're going to figure out how to use these operators or modifiers. See you then.